back at it again and guys you remember over these past couple of days i was telling you guys you know and showing you that i think someone is behind all of this there's been some organizing going on there's some there's some dark stuff going on in this country especially you know as it pertains to these protests on these college campuses well here we have nyc deputy commissioner um nypd excuse me uh, NYPD Deputy Commissioner, and I want you to listen to what he has to say, what they figured out about some of these kids protesting on these college campuses, and I want to get your thoughts and your opinions on that. Like, share, comment, and hit that subscribe button if you are new, and let's dive in. I believe about 99% are students, and you know, Chief Show is going to talk about some of the literature and the leaflets that we found that both of these sites, one being here at the new school, the other one being at the uh, NYU. I just want to say, and I said it before, there is somebody behind this movement. There is some organization behind this movement. The, the level of organization that we're seeing in both of these uh, uh, encampments here and at Columbia, leaflets on how to protest, leaflets on how to commit civil disobedience, leaflets on how what to do when you get arrested leaflets or not uh what to say to the police when they ask you there is somebody funding this there is somebody radicalizing our students and our deputy commission of counterterrorism and intelligence will find out who it is and we'll be we're going to be asking them some questions when we do so this is a, a piece of literature amongst many that was uh we recovered from nyu and this is like i said one of many but i just want to read this to you Can you hold it up please yep it says, Occupy the Occupiers, enter the temporary autonomous zone from New York to Gaza from across Turtle Island. Disrupt, reclaim, destroy. Zionist business interests everywhere. Death to Israel real estate. Death to America on school. Long live the Intifada. So this is the mindset of some of these protests, you sure? And did you have any... Uh greater difficulty at one of the colleges than another today? No. With resistance? No, not at all. Uh, we gave we gave the uh, kids uh, something they need to learn. We gave them options, multiple options, and what their options were is to, in NYU, leave peacefully, and a lot of them did, and that's what we want. A couple said, I want to be arrested. Okay, fine. And we said, okay, you're at the summons level. Don't resist, and you'll get a summons. That worked out fine. Here, the same thing. A couple of kids took us up on the offer. A couple of kids did not. You saw them being arrested. And I hope you captured, I know you captured, the complete hatred for Israel that was being spewed and the hatred for the NYP being spewed by the youth of this school. All right, and that's something to, it's upsetting as a father and as, as, as New York City people, correct? The decision to raid came last night in conjunction with the colleges, is that, is that right? Yeah, the, uh, the two colleges, presidents in writing requested what, what they needed, what they wanted. And I wouldn't, call, I wouldn't call it a raid. I would call it just a removal of kids who are trespassing. That's what I would call it. Okay. And you know what? Let me, let me just add. If you go on my social media page, this is very important. I took a picture of this. Lessons on taking over a school. Can you believe that? Lessons on how to take over a school at NYU. Tell me that somebody's not radicalizing our students. What, what NYU student would do something like this? Somebody's behind us. Lessons on taking over a school. One, out of the quad. Two, if you build, they will come. Four, listen to the organizers. Five, be prepared. Six, read the pamphlets. Lessons on how to take over a school. Come on, folks. There's somebody right. behind this. Have a good day, Thank guys. You. So yeah, you saw the uh, NYPD deputy commissioner there. Now, I have a feeling that um, he's not going to be looking any deeper into the situation because he's probably already gotten a phone call. You know, um, they know who's behind it and he's not going to be asking them any types of questions. But, you know, it is interesting to see what they found out. 
exactly what we had been speculating, but uh, I think we all know what's going on. I have to say these 10 cities that they're building across college campuses are crazy, but are really well organized. And you know I had to look into this to understand who's behind all of this and who's paying all these people. I have to be honest, what I found was not really shocking, but I was surprised by how similar it is to the BLM summer riots of 2020. You see, these encampments are actually really well organized. The students receive the tents from organizers that also supply a bunch of different food like pizzas, rotisserie chicken, coffee. So I looked into who these organizers actually are and they're three prominent groups. Students for Justice in Palestine, there's Within Our Lifetime, and then there's Jewish Voices for Peace. And these groups are actually led and organized by another organization called U.S. Campaign for Palestinian Rights. And just guess how much these fellows are paid. They get $7,800 if they work eight hours a week on some kind of Palestinian campaign. Makes you rethink what the hell you're doing with your life. And across these campuses, we've seen these fellows speak out at various events. Nita Lafi, Craig Morton, Malika Fina. So where the hell does USCPR even get this money to pay these fellows that much money? And who funds Students for Justice in Palestine and these other organizations? Here's where it really gets interesting. Almost all of their funding comes from rich, elite investors such as George Soros, Howard Horowitz, and members of the Rockefeller family. And isn't that ironic on its own? You see, George Soros's Open Society Foundation, along with Rockefeller's Brother Fund, gave $700,000 to these organizations. And we know now that the Open Society Foundation isn't run by George Soros anymore. It's actually run by his brother, Alex Soros, and his partners, Huma Abedin, with direct ties to the Muslim Brotherhood. As they say, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Now, the Open Society Foundation also funded $20 million into the Tide Foundation. And the Tide Foundation takes this money and disperses it across all of these organizations across the U.S. They funnel money into Westpac, which is an organization that is led by Howard Horwitz. And Westpac is actually the fiscal sponsor for Within Our Lifetime. And guess what? All of these organizations have direct ties to the 2020 Summer Love Riots. So the question I have to ask is why? Why now? Why again in the summer before a presidential election? I have Allegedly, of course. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, these folks are being organized. This wasn't spontaneous, in my humble opinion. Obviously, we got some, some uh, evidence there, but this wasn't spontaneous. These weren't just students organizing this. These were some bad folks. Um, and of course you add on top of that, we have an open border, right? Um, so li listen, I, I, I cannot wait until uncle Trump walks back into that white house and we can start getting every single last one of these folks out of here. Right. Um, because this is literally a danger to us. We don't know who these folks are, where they came from, what their intentions are. Right. Um, <clears throat> where they went to, because there's some gotaways, right? There's some folks who they did not catch uh, or did not process that just came into the country. And now you have these uprisings on college campuses, which could, uh, could easily, very, very easily spill over to, you know, outside of college campuses onto our city streets, like the riots, the BLM riots did. Um, and with the riots, like I said, now you now you have people mixed in to those crowds that do not like us or our country and would love. I'm sure some of them would love to see our country burn. Yeah. Dangerous stuff, man. Very, very dangerous stuff. Not all hope is lost, though. I do want to end this video on a high note. Um I know, you know, everything's been a little, little dreary, but uh, this is the University of Chicago. Check out this clip. USA! 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 So, yeah, all hope is not lost, ladies and gentlemen. All hope is not lost. It's far. Far, far from lost, but uh, 
if we don't win come November, it very well could be. Y'all stay safe out there. Peace and love. I'm out.